Are y'all living the dream today? Yeah? Living the dream. Hey, so glad that you are here this morning. Y'all know what this week is? It's Thanksgiving. Can you guess what we're going to talk about today? Thanksgiving. No, we're going to talk about uh, joy. Y'all were, no, I'm just kidding. We are talking about Thanksgiving. Um, hey, if you don't know, my name is Landon. Uh, I'm on staff here at Beyond Church. This is actually my mom, Mona. Say hi, Mona. And she's the discipleship pastor here. Y'all clap for her. Thank you. She's the discipleship pastor here, and we're going to actually uh, tag team again. We did on Wednesday night, and we just thought, let's run it back on Sunday morning. All right? So uh, you got the discipleship pastor here. I'm actually an executive pastor, so you'll get discipled and executed all this morning. So are you all ready for that? I'm just kidding. That would be terrible. You will be discipled, though, okay? Uh, So Pastors Nate and Evan, their family, they're uh, at, I guess, Deer Camp this week. This is their annual family Schlegel Thanksgiving tradition to kill deer. So they're doing that, and so uh, we're going to minister the word today. Um, Y'all want to hear a joke? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's try it. Uh, I did read this earlier. It was actually really funny. It's uh, how do you how do you stop? Um, what's the best way to stop a, a fight between two blind guys just viciously fist fighting each other? Say, my money's on the dude with the knife. <laughs> that one got me. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I just do these for Kyle, not y'all, all All right? These are are just for Kyle. A little more corny one, though. You know, a Thanksgiving one, this mother turkey was disciplining her children. They were being disobedient. She said, if your father knew what you were doing right now, he'd roll over in his gravy. (laughs) Happy Thanksgiving. That's good. Seriously, how how many of you parents are excited to cook a huge Thanksgiving feast this week so your kid eats a roll, right? It's going to be awesome, isn't it? I've been to two Thanksgivings already, and I've seen these young kids, teenagers, they would get a roll, two rolls, and like one, they'd find a chicken strip somewhere. (laughs) Two rolls and a chicken strip. Parents, this is on y'all. You've got to train your kids better than this. This is unacceptable. It's unacceptable behavior. There is a correct way to make a Thanksgiving plate, and that is not what it looks like. I was at a Thanksgiving the other day where, where one of the kids had like four rolls and macaroni and cheese on their plate. This is why you need to come to church, okay? (laughs) To learn how to parent and train your kids. No. um, Let's let's teach our kids to eat turkey the right way, okay? All right. Praise the Lord. Hey, let's go ahead. You know one thing that we've noticed, that I've noticed, um, we even talked about this on Wednesday some, uh, there, there are people out, obviously, on vacation, spending time with their family, but there's people out, and there's stuff going around, uh, people who aren't feeling well, and how many of you know, if, if that was you, you would want a supply of the Spirit made for you so that, uh, what does the Bible say? You know what Jesus did? He sent his word to heal them. So just like he sent his word to heal them, so we can send his word and, and his healing power will flow to them, right? What did, what did the centurion say to Jesus? He said, I'm a man under authority, uh, and, and when I say to do something, my people do it. So, Jesus, I understand authority. Just speak the word, and he said healing will flow. So what we're going to do this morning, just real quick, is we're going to pray, and we're going to speak the word, and healing is going to flow to the people who need it this morning, okay? Hallelujah. Do you believe that? The Bible says that when a righteous person pl- prays, there is tremendous power made available. And this, we talked about how this is why unity and being connected to a, a local church is so important. It's so that when you're connected, your pipelines are open for power to flow to you when you need it. Amen. So let's make power available to those people right now and see Amen. healing flow. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you right now uh, that you have thank paid you. the price for our healing. Surely Jesus bore all our sickness. All Surely he took all disease from us. Yes. And with his thank stripes... You, we were healed. And so right now, we have come to agreement with your word. We align ourselves under your word and say, we are healed. This church is healed. Right. Every person in Beyond Church is healed and whole by the stripes of Jesus. And so we do what Jesus did. We send your word and heal them right now. We thank you for power being made available for them to tap into. Healing flow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 Do you believe that? It's working. God's word works. It works. 
Amen. God's word works. Every time. Someone say every time. Every time. Every time. Hey, I want to open up um, this morning, and I'm going to turn over to mom uh, here in a second. But I want to open up, and I want to read uh, Psalms chapter 100. This is a psalm of thanksgiving. So I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. So uh, if you don't have that, you may not. You have it on your phone. You can read up here. Let's read through this. Lift up a great shout of joy to the Lord. Go ahead and do it, everyone, everywhere. Y'all could have done that. I wouldn't. That would have been all right. As you serve him, be glad and worship him. Sing your way into his presence with joy mm. and realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping the Lord our God, for he is our creator and we belong to him. We are the people of his pleasure. You can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. Mm. For the Lord is always good. Someone say always good. Always good. He is ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you, so kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness toward all. Hallelujah. Everyone knows our God can be trusted Hallelujah. for he keeps his promises to every generation. Say every generation. Every generation. That means every all of generation. you. He keeps his promises to you. That's He's right. amazing. And I love what this says in the message. You know, you know the, the King James says, come into his courts with thanksgiving, right? Enter his gates with thanksgiving, come into his courts with praise. The message translation says, enter with the password, thank you. Thank you is the password into God's presence. Man, if you feel like you're far from God, man, open up your mouth and find something to thank him for. You'll find yourself That's right. in his presence where you can get what you need. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is kind of build off of what Pastor Nate taught on last Sunday. The title of last Sunday's message was Whose Call? Whose Call? And how he ended, uh, and it's talking about unity, and it's talking about us coming under. You know, when we're talking about unity and being in unity with God, unity with God doesn't look like this. God and I are agreeing on the same thing. We agree on something, and here we're at the same level. Unity with God means me coming underneath what God said, That's right? right? That's Whether I agree with it or not, right? I'm coming underneath of what God said, and this is called submission. This is called humbling myself and submitting to what God said, and this Amen. is called unity with the Father. Amen. Unity with the Father isn't like this. It's like this, Right? And so we're going to kind of uh, be piggybacking off of that. And what he had talked about, the way he ended last week's message, really set us up for today. And it, how many of you know, if you know that being in unity with the Father looks like that, you want to know how to get there, right? Sometimes we, we talk about these things in church, but the question is how? How do I do that? And he said, if you want to know how to position yourself under uh, and be submitted to the Lord, he said, become more thankful. And so we're going to build on that a little bit today, Amen. and we're going to talk about honor and thanksgiving. Someone say honor. Honor. And thanksgiving. And thanksgiving. These are, these are huge, and I'm going to let uh, mom go ahead and share some on honor. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a note uh, following, following girl here, and if I don't stay on the notes, that means that uh, we're going to be here till two or three. So y'all are praying that I stay on the notes, right? Thank you, Lord. How many of you guys remember uh, earlier in this year that we talked a lot about honor and about reverence on the rise? How many of you were here for that, right? Uh, and so we're just going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, it's important because it is the language one of the languages of heaven. How many of y'all know that heaven is a place of great honor? Yeah. Of great honor for the Lord and great honor for one another. Yeah. Right? Um, and so I'm reminded, I want, I want to read this here, and that is what Brother Kenneth e. Hagan said. He said, when reverence and honor are restored, there will be restoration and multiplication of the miraculous power of God. Hallelujah. It is the truth. When reverence and honor are restored, there will be restoration and multiplication of the miraculous power of God. How many of y'all have been looking for the miraculous power of God? Yes. Amen. Uh, and, and so we've got to understand that, uh, that the miraculous, that the flow of heaven doesn't just show up in a casual atmosphere. 
And so what he is in, uh, emphasizing to us, and I've seen it. I've seen uh, the growth. I, I've seen heart changes. I've seen uh, the change in us as a body where reverence and honor has been on the rise this year. Amen. 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 And uh, rev reverence for the Lord, reverence for his things. How many of you know when we honor him, uh, we treat him and his things differently than we do anything else? Uh, what, what he says, his body, going to church, his word, how we treat that is an indication in our heart of how we are honoring him. Or, or I would say even dishonor, right? And, and so there are, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but there are limiting factors that are in our lives sometimes that uh, hinder the flow of heaven. Sorry that I spit just there. But that hinder the flow of heaven. And so what we want is we want to live under an open heaven. And God wants us living under an open heaven. But again, the attention to our heart, because how many of you know honors of the heart? When, when, when you give a child instruction to go take out the trash, they may obey outwardly, but they're not saying good things in their heart. They're mumbling and complaining on the inside. That's not honor. Honor is of the heart, and we train we train our children and we train ourselves in, in this area of honor. And I'm telling you, it's on display. Uh, our honor for the Lord, our honor for his things, it's on display on how we talk and how we live and our actions. We can't fake this. That's right. Amen. Amen. So reverence and honor calls for something. Again, he said, when reverence and honor are restored, there will be restoration and multiplication of the miraculous power of God. So reverence in our hearts, reverence in this family, in this assembly, it calls for something. What does it call for? It calls for the flow of heaven. Amen. Amen. And again, I'm just going to say it again. The flow of heaven doesn't just show up in a casual atmosphere. When we just come and show up and do our religious duty of coming to church, but when we enter this parking lot and we're assembling on purpose, we're coming to honor the Lord and acknowledging Him of who He is in our lives, then truly when we come through these doors, our expectation will be to see the glory of God in manifestation when we assemble together. Amen. Amen. So 1 Samuel 2.30 in the King James, it said, For them that honor me, I will honor. This is the last part of that verse. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Them that honor me, I will honor. So this verse is telling me and it's telling you that I'm the one who determines how God can treat me. God's already been so good. He's already been so faithful. He's already poured out his love. He's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. But in my heart of either honor or dishonor, I am determining how much of his honor I can partake of. Amen. That's right. Amen. So my measurement of honor is the exact measurement or capacity that I have to receive from him. And so I'm going to say it again. It isn't that his power isn't flowing. It isn't that his uh, favor isn't flowing. It isn't that his healing isn't flowing. It isn't that the life of God is not flowing. It is flowing. But the determining factor of, of how much of that flow I can partake of depends on my connection to him. And a big part of that is the position of my heart and my honor for what he honors. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll say something. Say something. You may be getting to this, but you know what we're talking about here in its simplest form. You remember the story, uh, I think it's in, it's in the Gospels, of Mark chapter 6 is one of them, when Jesus is in his own hometown, right? Yeah, right. And he says that he, he's around all these other areas, and he's doing mighty works, miracles, all these things. He comes to his own hometown. And what happens? There's a lack of honor, right? Right. Why? Because they, they, don't, they don't see 
they see Jesus, but they don't see him for who he truly is. Isn't That's that just right. the carpenter's son? They live just right down the street, right? And so religion really has got it wrong in a lot of ways. You know, religion will say, I know that God can, but, but will he? Right? Mm -hmm. a, a lot of us are, are truly convinced of God's power and that God can. He's God. He can do anything. But will he? But how many of you are convinced that God's willing to? The, the, God's will is right here, in this word right here. His word is his will. And all I see in the ministry of Jesus is, I will, I will, I will, I will. Right. I will. Right. So his will is made clear. He will. But, but can he? Is God able? Well, hold on a second. Is he able in your life? Maybe. It's up to you. Maybe. Did you know that you can limit God's power? This is what we're talking about. Dishonor, lack of honor, lack of just respect and awe and of understanding what we're to be submitted under. You will actually limit the power of God, and I don't want to step on what you're talking about, but how they limited, the children of Israel limited the Holy One of Israel. That's you right. can put limits on God. That's right. I can put limits on God when I choose not to honor what he said. When I choose to believe what, what I've experienced, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to elevate my experience over his word. I've now limited God's power in my life, even though I believe he's willing to do what he said he would do. That's right. Psalm 78, 40 and 41 is the scripture that he referenced there. And uh, this is a chapter talking about the children of Israel. And it says, how oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? What, did the, what are the children of Israel famous for in the wilderness? Complaining. Complaining, yeah. Being so, babies. <laughs> says, yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Is it possible to limit the limitless God? Yes. yes. And where does that limitation fall? Oh, We're the limiting factor. Yeah. Amen. And I do, I, I just, I believe this, that there is, uh, that this is an answer for someone today. And it is just the repentance of the lack of honor that has been in, uh, in your heart for, for the things of God. For the, for, the, for the Lord and for the things of God. How many of you know we cannot say that we honor the Lord and we do not honor his church? Right. Yeah. We cannot say that we honor the Lord and we do not honor his church. And the assembling of his church. Hello? They didn't like that. They cut Woo. you off. You're back now. I'm back. Don't say the wrong thing again. Yeah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <clears throat> All right. So honor is about the high place, the first place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's how I order my life. It's how you order your life. How many of you know what you call important and what you honor is where that you're going to put all your attention, your effort, your resources. Amen? Amen? And everything, everything about my life should honor him. Everything about my life should acknowledge him as my source, acknowledge him as my Lord. My resources, he's Lord of my resources, right? He, he, he's, he's, the boss, he's the boss of my life. So really for the Lord to be Lord uh, in our lives, uh, we can't pick and choose what he's Lord over. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and so he referenced a while ago uh, in Mark about when, when Jesus was uh, teaching in his hometown and it tells us that he there could do no mighty work. Uh, in, in, this is in excuse me, Mark uh, chapter 6 and 2 through 6, but in verse 3, the last part, it said, and when they had thought about it that way, what does it mean? Uh, just like he said that they, they were sitting there, isn't that Mary's boy? Isn't, isn't that just the brother of, of James and of Joseph? So he was teaching, and they were all amazed by his teaching and the wisdom and the power that was flowing out of him until they decided to think about who he was in the flesh. 
There was no acknowledgement of who he was in eternity. There was no acknowledgement of who he was in the spirit realm. They were in the presence of God himself, and yet they judged him according to the flesh. And according to the familiarity of who they knew him to be in the flesh. And it said, and there he could do no mighty work. They became indignant and closed themselves off to his message. And so I'm going to relate this uh, as well uh, to the delegated authority and to the gifts in the body that he has given the church uh, for the equipping and the building up of the body in the fivefold ministry gifts. And one of the fivefold ministry gifts that we uh, live with on a weekly basis is that God gives us pastors, right? The under shepherds of the flock. And do you know there is a supernatural supply, an anointing, a flow from heaven that is for you through your pastor. And it's not according to the flesh. It's not according to natural carnal things, but it is according to heaven and according to a supply of the Spirit. But we can cut off that supply. We can make it null and void in our lives by becoming so familiar and just judging the office and the gift of a pastor according to the flesh. Amen. Amen. So, uh, so we don't do that around here. And I'm, and I'm going to say this. Uh, I wrote this in my notes here somewhere, but I'll, I'll just uh, skip it. But in all of my years of being in church, I'm going to tell you, this is the most uh, honorable, peaceful atmosphere that I have ever, ever been in where, where church is concerned. And that is a product of honor in your hearts. It's a product of the Word of God and not just being hearers of the Word, but being doers of it. I'm blessed. We are blessed. Amen. Amen. So another thing about honor, honor for God means uh, that there's honor for His Word, that we make His Word final authority. How many of y'all remember that we talked a lot about this? In this house, in this house, God's Word is final authority. All right, and uh, I, I, re I remember that this was said as far as honor and what we make final authority. If the Lord does not have first place in, in my heart, if he does not hold first place of honor, him and his things in your heart, then you have to know he won't be second place either. He's going to fall to the place of convenience. Just, just where him and his things, just wherever it falls and whatever is convenient. Right? Yeah. All right. So God's word being final, final authority. Proverbs 4, 20, 23. Very familiar scripture uh, to all of you. My son, attend to my words. Consent to my sayings. Uh, this is coming up under his authority, Right? Attending and submitting to. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. Health and healing to their flesh. How many of y'all need some health and healing to your flesh? Yeah. The word of God is health and healing. When we consent and come up under the authority of that word. Rather than other words that are coming to us. Right. Thank God for doctors. Doctors should not be the final authority in your life. Understanding the value of the word is imperative. If I don't honor it, it cannot honor me. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about uh, complaining a little bit here. You good? Oh, that sounds fun. Let's do that. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about... Li so another limiting factor of our hearts uh, that would limit the Holy One of Israel in our lives. Murmuring and complaining. Uh, I read an article that says the average person complains, listen to this, between 15 and 30 times a day. No one even gasps. Gross. <gasps> no one even gasps like, yeah, that, aren't that thinking seems like, reasonable. Oh, that's, that's too low, right? <laughs> that's too low. Yeah, yeah. Hey, no, this, is, this, is really, this is really an issue. You know, yeah. when we're more predisposed to complain rather than give thanks, 
something's backwards. Yeah. But you understand that this is how people in the world are programmed. But it shouldn't be for a, a born again, a believer to be that way, right? Right. Right? Right. Well, there's, we have a new nature and we're to renew our minds with God's word, right? And we shouldn't be complaining more than we're giving thanks. You know that if something's big enough to complain about, it's big enough to give thanks about. We complain about some little things. Guess what? You can just as easily give thanks for that little thing. You know, you work on this, and, and you don't have to teach your kids to complain, do you? They complain. I, you know, I almost lost it last night. We were going out to eat, um, and we w went to this place to eat, and she liked this place. Well, it was a two-hour wait. We're not eating there. And so we were going to another restaurant, and her response was, Ugh a Mexican restaurant, and I'd already said before that, I said, if I hear one complaint, if I hear one complaint, y'all are going to see me take this belt off when I get home. Come on, we're in Arkansas. I know it's 2022. <laughs> I needed a few amens there to feel safe, but <laughs> come on, you've got to dis discipline your kids. Listen, we need it. Yeah. We, we, it's, we have to be trained. Parents, you know, a lot of, a lot of times, it's, it's so funny about how uh, people, older folks, uh, I'm getting there myself, are complaining about the younger generations. Who raised the younger generations? I'm talking to me. Talking to you, Mom. Talking to, I'm talking to us. It starts here. Here. Where did my kid learn complaining from? We think that we're thankful. We think that we're having to and teach something, train something out of our kids that they're not just seeing themselves. Yeah, that's right. But if I said, if I hear one more complaint about anything, about anything, we're having it out. And she got in and we got in the car, so we're going to a Mexican place. She goes, oh, a Mexican I said, what? She said, a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> I said, no, here's what you said, here's what you caught yourself, and I'll count it, but here's what you were, where you were going. It's a training thing, though. Why should our first response be complaining about something, especially a, Mex a Mexican restaurant? Come on. But she changed it. She changed, and guess what? We can be trained out of this. That's right. right? We can discipline ourselves That's right. out of this. With God's word. That's right. Because complaining, murmuring and complaining is not the flow of heaven. How many of you know that? When we're murmuring and complaining, I'm not fellowshipping with heaven. Right. Yeah. And I'm cutting myself off from the very supply that I'm needing to take care of whatever it is I'm griping about. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And she ordered chicken strips at the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Listen. That's a problem, but she eats all the Thanksgiving food, so. And she didn't eat them because they were too hot. So guess, guess what? I had all my enchiladas and her chicken strips, and I'm still full, so. Your girls are good eaters. No, they are. I actually they are. love they're really cooking good. for them. Yeah, I, I look at other kids, and they, I'm like, what are y'all doing? T show your kids how to eat. Watch this. Watch my kids eat this. Yeah. Teach them to eat vegetables. Landon is still blaming me because I didn't make him eat his vegetables when he was little. Yeah, I eat potatoes. That's the vegetable. I told him Amen. he's a grown man now. Make the choice. No. They're gross. They're just gross. I'll just work out more so I can eat more potatoes. More, more starch. Yeah. That's what... I love... I'm thankful. I'm... Jens, do you have a mic? What is happening over here? <laughs> ushers, ushers, <laughs> security. If he wasn't the head of security right now. I'd, oh, yeah, he's we, the head of security. I'd have him take himself out of here. <laughs> oh, mercy. Hey, get back to this. All right, get back to this. All right, Philippians 2.14. Let's look at some scriptures. Write the, I hope y'all are taking notes and, and writing uh, these scripture references down. Uh, I'm going to reiterate what Pastor has uh, said many times in that our notes from services is the best devotional we'll have all week long. Amen. Philippians 2.14 in the King James says, Do all things, how many? All. Without murmuring and disputings. The Amplified says, Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining. I was listening to uh, Brother Keith Moore uh, in his Thanksgiving Victory series. How many of y'all have... 
uh, yeah, and so it really should be a regular in our lives. But, you know, he was saying something this morning that sometimes, you know, we wake up and just as soon as we open our eyes, we're, we're uh, slapping the alarm clock off of the nightstand and, and just grumble, grumble, oh, it's cold in here, grumble, grumble, go to the closet and look, oh, these clothes are too tight, grumble, grumble, what am I going to wear? Oh, my gosh, look at this hair. This is the most pathetic excuse for hair. Grumble, grumble. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and so, and we're just kind of trained that way. Grumbling and grumbling and complaining. That's not starting our day off in the flow of heaven. That's, that's, that, that's not definitely far from, from Thanksgiving. So what am I setting the tone for? I'm, expe- I'm setting the tone to fellowship with lack and darkness through the day. That's what I'm doing. In 1 Corinthians 10.10, 10, it says, uh, Neither murmur you, and, he, and he's talking here about the people in uh, the wilderness again, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. We're talking about murmuring and complaining. We're not talking about murder. Yeah. We're talking about uh, murmuring and complaining. In the message, it says, We must be careful Not to stir up discontent. Discontent destroyed them. We're talking about murmuring and complaining here. Amen. And so the recognition that when I'm murmuring and when I'm complaining, not only am I not in the flow of heaven and his grace and his favor and his goodness and his love, but I've opened the door wide open to the destroyer to come into my life and have his way to bring destruction. Amen. Amen. And... um, uh, this, while we were in worship earlier today, uh, earlier uh, this morning, I mean, this, this word just, uh, just kind of rose, rose up strong in me. And it's that uh, someone being just depressed and just really giving up and saying, like, my best days are behind me. I have nothing to look forward to. And the Lord is just saying to you right now, if you'll repent, I'll open up the windows of heaven and show you more goodness than you've ever seen in your life. And a matter of repentance is uh, repentance is a decision. There's nothing emotional about it. It's making a decision to change the way that you've been thinking. Turn to the Lord. Just make the decision right now. Lord, I repent. And I come back under your authority and your dominion. And his promise is he's going to open up the windows of heaven and show you more goodness than you've ever seen in your entire life. Hallelujah. And to finish your life out in victory and not in defeat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, Exodus 16, 17 through 8, and he's he's talking... Uh, here and this is uh, you know the Lord in the middle of the wilderness when when the people the children of Israel grumbling and and complaining and um, just the last part of it uh, the Lord has heard Moses is saying the Lord has heard your grumblings which you murmur against him they're murmuring and complaining about not having uh, to eat what they want to eat. They're murmuring and complaining about not enough water, not enough this. But how many of you remember that in the wilderness he supplied every single one of there? And yet there was this constant murmuring and this constant complaining. And it said, Moses said, your murmuring is against him. He said, what are we? Your murmurings, my murmurings, uh, uh, Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And so when we murmur and complain, this is what we need to think. We're not complaining about a circumstance. We're not complaining about even another individual. We're complaining about the Lord. And God takes it personal. God takes it personal uh, because what we are saying is, God, you're not enough and you're not doing a good enough job taking care of me or supplying my needs. And, and let's face it, as Christians, as born-again people, you know, children of light, my complaining ruins my witness. Yeah. 
It's true. No one is drawn to the Lord when I'm over here griping and complaining about anything. The thanksgiving in my heart, it's a language of faith. And how many of you know God's a faith God? God is a faith God. And thanksgiving is the language of faith. Amen. Two more scriptures uh, just on this part. Proverbs 15, 4 in the Living Bible. It says, gentle words cause life and health. Griping brings discouragement. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever been around people that just gripe, 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 gripe? Have you ever just griped, 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 right? You get sick of your own self sometimes? (laughs) Tammy thought that was funny. Uh, So griping not only brings discouragement to those that are around us and hearing it, but listen, it fuels and strengthens discouragement in us. Our ears always hear what our mouth is saying. So the more we gripe, the more discouragement sets in, right? Amen. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as it's fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace. So it's telling us that the words that we speak, if we're mindful of this, we're living in a lifestyle of of thanksgiving, the language of faith, that in our conversations we want to minister grace to the hearers. We want to minister grace to the hearers. And how many of you know, again, we are always hearing our own words. And so the words of our mouth can minister grace uh, to us as well. Amen. Amen. It's good. And you know what? Sometimes we think of grace just as this Bible word. You know what grace is in its most uh, just simple form? It's, it's really a person. Yeah. It's Jesus. So my words are, are either introducing Jesus into the situation, into people's lives, or someone else. Yeah. Right? That's right. And so what, what would be the opposite of complaining? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Not a trick question. Excellent job. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Not a trick. So I want, to talk about, I want to talk about this a little bit because it's not just, it's not just okay to not complain. Yeah. Because if you think, well, I'm not complaining, but maybe I'm not thankful, you'll find yourself in the middle. And really, where you're at in the middle, you might as well be on the complaining side. Yeah. Right? Right. right. And, and we'll see this. And I want to take a little bit different approach as we talk about Thanksgiving this morning. As we're talking about honor and thanksgiving and the things that position us under the flow of heaven you know we need to think about it like a like a water faucet you know there's a valve in there when you when you turn the valve that the the valve can open all the way right it can be open halfway what it affects the flow it affects how much water you're going to get right it does so the more honor the more thanksgiving the more that valve opens and the more flow that you'll be getting yeah. And guess what? God's right. will is that you would be overflowing with his, his grace and everything good in his life. That valve's all the way open so that you're overflowing and spilling over onto others. Men. We don't need that valve pinched off just a little bit and think that a little bit's good enough. Right. Right? We want to be fully submitted to God and, and what he said. So yeah. uh, I want to look at Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 8. Uh, it says, And when you pray... Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans or Gentiles, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. So there's two types of prayer mentioned here. One by the hypocrites, who they go out in public and they just want people to see that they're praying. And he's very clear here that they've received their reward in full when they do that, right? Mm-hmm. And he says, "Go, you, you go in secret and pray to me. And then he talks about another prayer, like the Gentiles, the, the unbelieving people, who would just use a whole lot of words. I'm going to use a whole lot of words, maybe some Christianese words that I've heard before, and I'm going to use a whole lot of words and talk to God. And the implication here of both of these prayers is that God doesn't even hear those prayers. 
Do y'all see this? If their reward is going out in public so they're seen by others, what, where, where was God in that at all? He's not. He, there's, he didn't even hear that prayer. And he doesn't hear just many words being prayed. That's right. So let, you, you hear this question. God answers prayers. God hear, does God hear your prayers? Maybe. Maybe. Let's kick over a, a sacred cow this morning. Maybe he does. Look at 1 John chapter 5. 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, say this with me, according to his will, according to his will, yeah. he hears us. Right. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the confidence uh, that we'll have what he said, what we asked for, right? Right. right? So does God hear all of our prayers? No. Not if they're not prayed according to his will. See, we, we've been accustomed to think that whatever we throw up to God is getting to God and he's hearing it. And the reality is that we've got a communication problem. We're not speaking the same language right. if we're not praying according to God's will. Right. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I know that this may not be what we've been taught all of our lives, but this is, I'm reading scriptures, aren't I, out of the Bible? I'm reading scriptures out of the Bible. Amen. I can be confident that God hears me when I pray according to his will. Yeah. Now, the beautiful thing about God is he's so merciful that when we don't know anything about God's word, guess what? He's hearing what you're saying to him. But, right. but you don't know anything about But if you know something about his word, if you know what his word says, if you know what his will is for your life, right. and we come to God using all these words, begging and praying prayers of worry, is God hearing what I'm saying? No. No. no, because he knows that I have his word and his will to pray to him. Right, right. And God's a faith God. He's not a worry God. He's not a care God. He's a faith God. So we've got to learn and grow up to approach God according to his word and in faith. Yes, we can't continue to, to lay in a cradle and cry and wait for someone to come put a bottle in our mouth. We need to approach God according to his word, and that is in faith. According to, according to faith comes by, and hearing by the word of God. So that's how we approach God. That's right, and, and it's growing up. This is just like I was listening to a message by Jeremy Pearsons, who he was talking about this. He said, you know, when they were so, you know, they had their first kid, and his first word was dada, and you know how excited you are when your first kid says their first word, and whatever that word is, you don't even care if it's not a word, but they're saying something, right? And you're so excited about it. Dada, 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 whatever it may be. And, and God told him one time, he said, you know why? You're, you're so happy and excited that he's saying that now. It's because that uh, up until this point, he's just said a bunch of nonsense and you don't understand anything he's saying, but now he's beginning to speak your language. That's good. He's beginning to speak your language now, and this is why you love it. That's right. You can understand what he's saying now. Yeah. Because babies grow up. Yeah. And as Christians, as spiritual babies, we're to grow up and learn to speak God's language, yeah. right? You know, have Amen. you ever... I know a little bit of Spanish, but not a lot. If you spoke to me in Spanish, uh, I likely wouldn't understand it. And, you know, what do we do when uh, we're speaking to someone where there's a language barrier and we're, we're speaking different languages? We talk to them louder like they're now going to understand us because we're talking louder in the same language that we were using before. Where is the bathroom? <laughs> it's true. Where is the bathroom? No habla inglés. God's like, no habla worry. I don't speak what you're speaking right now. Come on. What That's you're right. saying to me, I don't understand that. That's right. Stop saying it louder with all those words. That's right. Say something different that you may have seen in my word. That's right. So I can hear it and do something about it. That's right. That's right. This is, this, Christians, believers, this is where we have got to get to. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's so good. 
Uh, let's turn to First Thessalonians. Do y'all like how confidently I said that? We're going to skip that one. Let's go to First Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5. So, it, we need to know what God's will is for our life then, don't we? Yes. It's his word. Amen. First Thessalonians 5.18, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. That's right. You want God's will for your life? Here it is right here. First Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Someone say, no matter. No matter. What the circumstances may be, give thanks and continually be thankful. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is his will for you. So, true or false, I will never walk in God's will, or I can't be in the will of God without being thankful and continually giving him thanks. True or false? It's true. I cannot be in God's will for my life if I'm not living a life of thanksgiving towards him. Yeah, that's right. That's a true statement. And I want you to notice the language here. Mm -hmm. If you can put that back up, please. Notice the language here. We're to give God thanks in, in everything. Oh, no, that's a different one than what I have here for some reason. In every, oh, no. Yeah, it's different. In every situation, say in. In. We're to give God thanks in every situation, not for every situation. Right. See, this is another sacred cow that, that we've got to kick over. Uh, the, the Bible doesn't say that everything happens for a reason. That's not a scripture. It is not a scripture. It's not found in the Bible. Everything doesn't happen for a reason. Hey, let me, let me tell you something, church. God is not in control. God does not allow murder and death and rape and all the bad things. That's not part of who God is. Therefore, he's not in control of what's going on in the world. So, in... Are y'all good? Are y'all good with me? Y'all love me, right? I'm just reading the Bible to you. Look, you don't like it. Take it up with him, okay? <laughs> in every situation, not for everything. Right. There, you do not need to thank God for calamity in your life, for the death, for the breakup, for the lack, for the destruction. We don't right. thank God for those things, but let me, let me tell you something. Let me share something with you. You can and you should thank God in all of those things. Right, right. In the calamity, in the destruction, in, in the loss, in the, in the death, in the, you know what? There is something that you can, let me tell you something. A Christian, someone who finds something to thank God for in those things cannot be defeated. Find me a person who can thank right. God in every situation, and you find me a person who can't be defeated with anything that life throws right. at them. Right. Nothing. Right. Nothing. And, I, and I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. There is something that you can thank God for in every situation. There is. Yeah, I mean, thanksgiving, thanking God, again, it's the language of faith. Thank, thanking is not just good manners because according to his word, we just don't thank him. Uh, okay, something nice happens. Uh, thank you, Lord. We're all pretty conditioned to that. Something, something good comes into our life. We acknowledge it and we say, oh, thank you, Lord. But how many of you realize that thanksgiving is a language of faith? And we're thanking God in everything, even when things don't look quite right. What are we thanking God for? We're thanking him for his eternal word. We're yes. thanking him for his promises. Yes. We're thanking him that this situation in, uh, in our lives, that he is supplying uh, all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Thank you, Lord. I may not be looking at it right now, but, th but, but faith gives thanks before we see it. Yes. And so giving thanks keeps us in the posture of faith rather than in this worry and this care. Faith, faith, faith gives thanks ahead of time. Yep. Yeah. It does. And we're, I want to I wanna get into that a little bit more with this last scripture we're going to go over. But I want to hammer this point home. Just like repentance isn't an emotion, it's not, there's no emotional thing there, thankfulness is not either. This is not something that you have to feel emotionally Right. In order for you to do. Right. In fact, right. in fact, if you're doing it right, you'll start giving thanks when you feel zero emotional connection to it at all. And guess what you'll find? You'll find that your heart becomes more in it the more that you give thanks. That's right. right? That's right. This is true. That's right. And so it's just a choice. 
And what I love about the things in the Bible that God has given us is that I, I don't have to repent. We heard I get to repent. Thank you, Lord. Look, yes. I don't have to be thankful. I get to. You know why this is so powerful? Because it's my choice, and nothing in this world, not anyone in this room, can take that away from me. I'll always have my choice, and no one can ever take it from me. That's right. It's my choice. I get to choose. All right, let's look at one last scripture here. Are you all good? All right. We'll close if, if you can listen really quick here, all right? See how good we can do. Philippians chapter 4, 6, uh, verse 6. Mm. We heard this a few weeks ago with Pastor Chip Brim. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Yeah, come on. Someone say then. 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 You will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Thank God for what he has done. Amen. Yeah, y'all can come on up and start Amen. playing. So once y'all do that, I'll start winding down. So we're to thank God for what he has done. Has God done something for you in your life? Yes. Let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. This is, this is interesting. Has God done something for you that you haven't experienced in your life? Yes. There are things that you may not be experiencing. There are things that God has done in the finished work of Jesus that you may not be currently experiencing in your life right now. Guess what? Amen. Even though you don't have it, you don't see it, you don't feel it, you're not experiencing it, you are able to thank him for it. Amen. And what she is saying, faith. when thanksgiving is the language of faith, this is what she's saying. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Right? Amen. Therefore, without me thanking God, acknowledging him, and acknowledging what he's done for me, I, it is impossible for me to please him. That's I right. must acknowledge that he is the source of what, and, and he can fulfill and do what he said he would do. Yes. Therefore, even though I haven't, ex yes. maybe I haven't experienced all the promises in God's word, but I can thank him for it because they are true and they are mine and he has done them for me. Right. Thank you, Lord, Thank that you, even Lord. though I'm currently not feeling well, my body's sick, I don't feel good, this disease, and even though that's what's currently going on right now, I thank you that you have healed me by the stripes of Jesus. That's right. That's right. See, this sounds you, foreign Lord. to the world. This sounds foreign when we haven't thought about it this way. This is why it's called faith. Mm -hmm. Faith calls those things that be not as though they already were. That's right. This is what faith does. See, faith, faith isn't just something that crazy church people have. Uh, they talk about all the things they don't have like they do have them. Faith is a higher reality. That's right. That's this right. This is the so plane good. that God lives in right here. That's right. And thanksgiving is your way to access it. That's right. This is why it's the language of faith. Yes. Honor and thanksgiving. Guys, these things are like power tools. They, they get you from one place to another. When you're in a foreign country and you're the only one who speaks that language, all you want is to get back to where someone can understand you. And what they do is they take you from this country of complaining where nothing's going right and everything is going wrong. And you begin to thank God and you begin to honor what he said over what you've heard, over what right. you believe. You begin to thank God and you find yourself back in a position under God, submitted under his authority or the flow of heaven. You're now speaking the same language and God can get to you what he wants to get to you. Amen. That's right. Thank That's you, right. Lord. Thank you, Lord. God's so good. That's right. Thank you, Lord. And he wants his promises fulfilled in your life more than you want them. That's and the he allows you, and th this is why we know God loves us so much, is because we have free will. God doesn't make me do anything. He gives Amen. me a choice. And then he tells me, hey, if you choose this good thing, you're going to get this good thing. That's right. I love it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey I want to interject stand. this Go before, ahead before you close there. Um, Y'all can stand. It's all right. Yeah, y'all can stand. Uh, or you can sit. That or gum. you can sit. Yeah. I hope y'all are more responsive to God than you are to me. My lands. Um, in, in his message, Thanksgiving Victory, uh, Brother Keith uh, said this a, a jillion times, that we're either thankful or we're unthankful. That there, 
well, can I be, can I not be thankful but not really be unthankful either? That's a no. There's no in between. We're, we're either thankful or we're unthankful. And the thing about being unthankful and our expression of it is that it's a slippery slope into darkness. It, and, and it takes us farther than we want to go and it costs us more than we want to pay. And that's the truth of, of having unthankfulness in my heart and, and upon my lips. It just pulls us uh, farther down uh, into darkness and into despair. But the thing about thankfulness is that it does the exact opposite. It keeps us attached to light. It keeps us attached to light. We may not know everything we need to know right now. We may not have everything we need to have. But if we'll stay in the mode of being thankful and in bringing God's word before him, Father, I thank you that you're faithful. I thank you that your promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. I thank you that you supply all of my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that according to your word by the stripes of Jesus' back, I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed. Well, I don't feel healed. Feelings have nothing to do with it. Feelings take us down into a deep, dark pit when we yield to feelings. And women, I'm going to talk to you about feelings. And, and, and there's some that just enjoy getting together and let's talk about our feelings. Well, it just feels better if I can just get it out and if I can just talk about it. No, it doesn't. It might feel good to your flesh because you're petting your flesh, but nobody wants to hear about your feelings. Oh, preach. I don't want to hear about your feelings. I don't want to talk about my feelings. I don't want to talk about my feelings. Why? Because feelings have nothing to do with faith. Yep. I just spit everywhere. Feelings have nothing to do with faith and the promises of God. Amen. So if we want to get together and we want to talk, we don't talk about how we're feeling and the things that we're working through. We're talking about the promises and the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Hey, I'll, men, I'll address you then. Hey, we're not talking about feelings. Praise the Lord. Hey, guess what? Now that you know that thankfulness isn't attached to a feeling, why don't you man up and go ahead and tell your wife, tell someone in your life that you're thankful for them. Why don't you be the one at Thanksgiving to go ahead and start that corny routine? Let's all tell, say something we're thankful for. Why don't you step out and be the lead on that, man? Amen. Men, when's the last time you told someone you were thankful for them? Or have we just been conditioned to think that's just a cheesy feeling and I ain't going to do that? There's power that you're missing out on there. Man, Thanksgiving is a powerful thing. Powerful. It's a loaded gun. It's ready. It has power to get you to where you need to be. I want you to just think about something that you're thankful for right now. You can bow your heads and close your eyes. I want you to think about something. If you're having, if you're having trouble finding something to be thankful for, uh, why don't you just thank God that you're in this place this morning. And because you were under the teaching of his word, faith is now there for you. So you can thank God for the faith that you have to now do what he said. There's something right there, all right? Something right there. But there, there might be something, and I just want us to practice. Listen, if we don't apply the word, uh, it does us no good. So we're just going to apply the word and thank God here in a minute. And if you, you know, here's another thing. If there's maybe someone that you need to thank God for, but there's been something there that, that is hard for me to thank God for this person because there's just been a rub there, there's been something wrong, listen, don't ever let what some, someone did to you be bigger than what Jesus did for you, okay? Let, man, Jesus has forgiven much. He's forgiven us so much. And so we can love much. So let's just, let's just find out what that is and thank God for it right now. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank him with your own mouth. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. You've been so, so, so kind to us. We thank you for your word. For without your word, we truly have nothing. But with your word. We're now empowered, Father, to live victoriously. And so, Lord, we purpose to honor you, to honor your word and what you said over what we believe. 
And Lord, we are going to enter this conversation between grace and faith where you say, grace has done this for you. And we're going to say, thank you. Thank you. That's mine in Jesus' name. Wow. Grace says, you are healed. Thank you. Thank you. I am healed. I am healed. Grace says, you Hallelujah. are provided for. Thank you. Thank you. You are my provider. You are my provider. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Grace Hallelujah. says, you're free from that addiction. Thank you. I am free. I am free Thank from you, this Lord. addiction. I am free. Hallelujah. Enter this Thank conversation. You, we enter this conversation with where, where you give us grace. We will respond with faith. It sounds like. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. You're so good. Father, we love you and we honor you today. And we thank you for the word that was sown into our hearts. And we thank you that it's going to produce a harvest in our lives that never could have been produced on our own. Yeah, that's right. Only your word. We will honor it. We'll take the notes that, that we have, the scriptures that we have. We'll honor them. We'll place them up high. We'll look to them. And we will honor them, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We love you. And as we enter into this week of Thanksgiving, we would just want to say thank you to you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the greatest gift. You, you had to give Jesus to us because your love was so great. Thank Father, you, thank Lord. you for Jesus. Thank you. We celebrate Jesus. him this week. We celebrate you this week. We love you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.